Welcome back. This is our second show here on BBN Live presented by eCoach. I'm Darren Hedrick and we'll be joined this evening as we were this er, uh, early this afternoon. We'll be joined by head coach Rachel Lawson of Kentucky Softball. We've got head coach Craig Skinner of Kentucky Volleyball here with us as uh, we bring you this web series while uh, everyone is at home. The teams are uh, not competing uh, due to the uh, COVID pandemic and so uh, we hope to uh, connect Big Blue Nation with our coaches during this time and we'll answer some questions throughout these shows as we go forward you can check them out each day 2 30 and 8 o'clock so we got two shows daily and uh we've got coach skinner and coach lawson with us now and uh let's start off real quickly and just get an update on your teams how's everybody doing right now through this unfortunate pandemic uh, coach skinner we'll start with you how's how's everybody with the volleyball team right now well it's um you know, the last time we saw them was the Thursday before spring break or, and, you know, we had a team meeting, we were scheduled to practice and then the NBA, you know, announcements came. And, and so we decided to just meet with the team um, that morning, that Thursday, and just talk through some things and about what the unknowns were going ahead. And, um, you know, so that's kind of the last time we were all together and, and we've, you know, emailed and corresponded. We're going to be on, have a couple meetings, you know, online this week and, uh, they're, you know, doing a good job of working out and, and, you know, staying in shape and nothing that we can require of them right now, but got a good motivated group of people to kind of stay on top of their own fitness. And, and, you know, we're going to, you know, I, I don't know how much we're going to hold them accountable in terms of volleyball and video type stuff right now. It's just such a unique time, but we're going to give them some opportunities to learn and see some professional volleyball players and teams and, you know, international teams playing and, and just kind of you know, talk with each position group each week and just kind of get caught up and connected and, and um, you know, kind of stay in tune and try and just control little things that kind of help us keep the train moving forward. Coach Lawson, how about you? Uh, how are things with the Kentucky softball program right now? Well, you know, first and foremost, everybody's healthy. So, so we're thankful for that because right before we were all sent home for you know, for this shutdown, we were signing autographs. We were on what four, you know, several planes. I want to say eight different legs or six different legs of airplanes um, going through major airports, those sorts of things. So, um, you know, we're just really thankful that everybody's healthy um, and doing well. And, and then we're back at school uh, trying to fi figure out this semester, try to finish it strong. And then um, we do need to um, get back into the softball thing. But unlike volleyball, who's going to be playing their season? you know, hopefully in August and, and starting in, we have, you know, we have a much bigger break, which brings some different challenges. So we're just focusing on getting healthy. Um, now's the time to try to get organized and to figure out our individual action plans and, and use the information that we gathered from such a short season so that hopefully our younger kids know what to work on for next year. Coach, I'm sure one question that you get a lot concerning the softball team and how the season unfortunately ended so quickly is the reaction how did the team take it when you had to tell them the news that you wouldn't be playing for an extended period and then ultimately it was announced that there would be no season how were they able to sort of process that and handle it on top of knowing that it was for the better good you know i i did a uh, interview with alex martins a couple of days ago and and uh she said it the best she said you know it's it's like we they went through all the stages of grief, but within like two days. So, you know, there was denial, there's acceptance, you know, there's sorrow, you know, all the, especially because, you know, this is, they put everything into it for so long. This is, you know, they put their heart, their soul, their effort. This was such a good class for so many different reasons. They, they were outstanding leaders. They were great people. Um, and they were having a, a great year. I mean, in the country, I mean, Alex Martins was number one by a lot in RBIs. And in, in some people would argue one of the best, if not the best hitter in the country this year. Bailey Vick led, you know, led the SEC and, and was high. I don't know if she was number one, but she was right up there in the nation with batting average. Kayla Kowalik led in triples. Mallory Payton was tied for home runs. So we were, and this was nationally, so we were having a, an incredible offensive year and was slowly starting to figure things out. And, and so it was a special team anyway. And then when you add it ending, that was... That was pretty emotional, but on the flip side, the reason they were such a good team was because they're unbelievable people. They're always out in the community doing stuff. They're heavily involved with FCA. They're doing so many different things. So 
if it were to happen to a team, the 2020 team was the best team to happen to because they understand the bigger picture and they're selfless people and, and they understand that there's, you know, there's a lot more at stake here than a softball game. Uh, for yourself, how did you manage the season coming to a sudden halt? You know, it's, I just felt really bad for the seniors, but, you know, because we're older, this isn't the first time we've seen tragedy. And I was, um, I was, uh, you know, working at the University of Maryland when 9-11 hit. So there was a shutdown, a national shutdown when that happened. Now, granted, it wasn't during the middle of our season, but to see a nation shut down for a few days, closing the national highways, everybody had to go um, inside a quarantine where we were living. So, you know, I, I personally have been through something like this, you know, nothing like the people who are who are quite a bit older than I am that have lived through wars, that have lived through other things. So fortunately, we've just lived in such a great time of prosperity that none of us have had to really, you know, most of us have not had to deal with a situation like this. But as soon as, you know, as soon as they shut down the basketball season, and, and you're talking, that that's a lot of money to a lot of communities nationally. I knew that we were, you know, we were going to be in big trouble. So um, I just immediately went into saving mode and tried to do whatever I could uh, for the senior class. Let's shift over to Coach Skinner now as uh, the volleyball team's coming off another SEC championship coach, but you also lose a couple of really key, really special seniors. What can Big Blue Nation expect out of volleyball this coming season, this fall? Well, you know, like everyone, we're keeping our fingers crossed that, you know, we get to that point and, and today we're, you know, just trying to take care of what we can, you know, and, and at the moment, but you know, we, had a, we had a very good year, um, you know, didn't get all the way to where we wanted to, but, but won the SEC and, and did lose some key players, Lee Edmond and Leah Meyer and Caitlin Cooper and Kylie Schmaltz and a couple of All-Americans. And, and so, you know, all-time kills leader in the program. I mean, the nice thing about what we have coming back, we have a couple of All-Americans back and we have important skill positions back, the setting position, libero position, ball control, outside hitter. Uh, we have some people that can kill the ball. Um, and we have, a, you know, on paper, a very good recruiting class coming in um, with a great core that's been here this spring. And, you know, the spring for us is a time to evaluate, kind of see where we are, see what system works best, see who's, you know, fits into what role. And um, we, you know, we're supposed to play our first spring match last Friday. and you know, missing out on those opportunities to kind of see where returning players and, and what it looks like um, puts a huge premium on preseason if we can get going in the summer and to evaluate, you know, the great players coming back and then the, the good ones coming in. So um, it, we, we should be skilled. We should be able to play the game at a high level. Um, point scoring is, you know, how we find make up the point scoring without Leah, Lee Edmond and Leah Meyer that, you know, took a lot of swings for us last year will be important. And a huge blocking presence by Caitlin Cooper. So, but uh, uh, we have a chance on on paper to be pretty good, and, and just a matter of trying to figure out what what are the right pieces. We've had some questions, and I wanted to talk to both of you a little bit about your recruiting process, things that you look for in, in student athletes, and obviously, with everything going on right now, recruiting has been really affected by that. But under normal circumstances, uh, Coach Skinner, we'll start with you. What are some things that you look for besides the athletic ability in a student athlete? What are some traits that you look for uh, in your recruiting process? You know, that may be one of the most important questions uh, that you get asked as a coach because it's it's talent is the obvious one and you can see talent in front of you. You can't see some of the other things that you really need and players to be able to survive, compete and thrive at this level. Um, you know, I, I know Rachel spends a lot of time evaluating not just the talent, but what type of person they are. And things that are really important to us are one, do they have the ability to learn? Do they have the ability to listen? And, you know, those are things that you try and observe when you're watching practices or games. And another thing is, you know, I, we talk about in our program, you touch the ball on average about 12% of the time. So what are you doing those other 88% of the time to help your team be successful, either in practice or in a game? So those are things that we try and find out, you know, what is happening when they aren't involved in the exact play. Um, another thing I think is important, especially at the collegiate division one level is 
do you compete? And, and it's easy to compete when you're playing against a big rival or there's someone in your position that you're trying to win the spot from, but it's hard. The great ones compete all the time. They compete to shag balls. They compete to, you know, who can be the first in line. They compete to who can win this mundane passing drill or, you know, I'm assuming, you know, taking grounders in softball or are you competing to, with yourself to be better on this rep than you were the last rep. And those are things you have to really try and find out and practice in settings that aren't at the high level. Um, so those are a few things I think are really important and we spend a lot of time trying to evaluate. Coach Lawson, how about you? What are some traits that you look for in your student athletes? Well, you know, I think simply put when I when I talk to people is one, they from a talent perspective, they have to have a skill that they can do better than everybody else. Um, they don't have to have all of the skills, but they have to have one. So whether they have an amazing arm that that they can pinpoint their throw and make the perfect throw at any time or you know if they can hit for average their own base all the time or, or they're just an unbelievable power hitter or something like that so they don't have to have all the skills but they have to have one skill that they're better at than their competition um and obviously they have to be the most competitive person on the field, like uh, Craig was saying. So if I go to a ball game and, and the fan in me enjoys watching the athlete run around and play, then I know the Big Blue Nation will like them. And it's really important. You know, we we build all these unbelievable stadiums and, and stuff and people think it's for recruiting, but at the end of the day, you build stadiums for fans. You create fan experience because you wanna be able to show off these unbelievable athletes and their talents that's what they that's what they want they want to be in front of a crowd they want to they want to have those moments and those experiences so number one are, are you know do you have a talent number two are, are you fun to watch and then um if you can pass the bar for those two tests then the next two things we always look at is number one what's your gpa um because grades oftentimes are indicative of your work ethic. So they're not always indicative of your overall intelligence level and, and neither are ACTs and SATs, but you know, they're, they're a decent metric, but your GPA really, are you doing what you're supposed to be doing at the right time, you know? And that means you're respectful of the teachers um, and, and just the process in general. And then if, you, if you're a good student, we get to the next phase. and. We look to see how you communicate with your parents and how you communicate with your teammates. So if you're somebody who makes eye contact with your parents and you're very respectful of your parents and you can have a, you know, a normal conversation with them, then, you know, then you've passed that part of the test. If you're somebody who's a little bit rude to your parents or rude to your teammates, then we will never bring you on because if you're rude to them now, that means you're just gonna, you know, you're gonna have those qualities when you come to us. But on the flip side, if you're respectful, um, if you have great parents, a great relationship, and you're somebody who genuinely cares about your teammates, then we know that you're not only gonna fit in, but you're gonna be somebody that's gonna develop and grow and become somebody that, you know, the Big Blue Nation can be proud of, can be, you know, enjoy watching on the field and, and can be proud to call a wildcat. So um, they're all simple things, but for some reason people kind of forget all about that and they just get in a batting cage and, and they just swing and swing and swing and swing and they can't get outside of the rectangle. But uh, you got to you gotta have all of them to be successful at our level. It might be a fun question for both of you in terms of, especially when you're in the season, you're trying to scout and get ready for the next opponent, get ready for games, while at the same time trying to do things you need to do in recruiting. How do you and your assistant coaches juggle that? Coach Lawson, we'll start with you. Well, we're probably not the best to ask of that because we we go incredibly hard at recruiting, you know, nine months out of the year. Um, but during season, we pretty much shut down our recruiting process. And, and in those nine months, the three, you know, myself, you know, Molly Johnson Belcher and Christine Himes, we all recruit equally. We were out on the road just about, you know, every day that we're allowed to be on the road and we're calling people, we're emailing, we're texting, we're doing all those sorts of things. But then during our season, we kind of shut that down. I mean, we'll text a little bit with people who, you know, we're allowed to and, and already are part of our process and will be coming to Kentucky in the future, but we pretty much shut it down. That's one thing we're actually spending this time recruiting, um, working on as a staff is, 
is developing the systems in place that we can stay in communication with recruits while we are in season, that the process is smooth because we put all of our energy and our attention into our current team during season. And then we split our time and our focus and attention nine months out of the year. Coach Skinner, how about you? Yeah, I mean, you know, very similar. Um, you know, we, you know, these are the times out of season um, are the times, you know, that we have to be on the road. And, you know, this would be a time that we're you know, one of us or both two of us or three of us maybe are out on the road trying to find the future Wildcats. And, you know, we, we're out, we're traveling, we're, we're in gyms and, you know, there's times we want to be watching UK softball or another event on campus, but that's the time that we're out recruiting. I mean, and during the season, you know, we go to practices periodically, probably once a week, maybe once every couple of weeks of our top recruits. But, you know, during the regular season, you know, like Rachel said, you have to spend so much time and energy preparing for the next practice and the next match. And, the, and then the following one, if you play two in a weekend, you know, who are you trying to expose on the other team. So there's so much energy put into that. It's really hard to put a ton of energy in recruiting during the regular season. But, you know, you do have to do a little bit of every day to stay in contact, to stay a little bit ahead of who your opponents are and on the recruiting trail. And, um, you know, you building the relationships and recruiting is critical and, and having great people on our staff and Anders and, and Carly and, you know, Chris, our director of operations, and even, you know, Katie Poole, our trainer, and Chris Scholes, and all these people that they come in contact with when they're on campus is so important because um, we need to have a connection and, and a genuine relationship with the with our players and the, and the future Wildcats. So it, it can't stop, um, but obviously it's more heavily um, you know, done by all of us all, a lot uh, this time of year outside of a regular playing season and during the summer when the national championships occur. Well, we really thank both of you for joining us. Uh, this was fun this afternoon and this evening. So uh, thanks for being our first guest on BBN Live presented by eCoach. It was a pleasure chatting with you and we hope both of you, your players, your families and your assistants, everybody on your staff, everybody stays safe. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Go Cats. Go Cats. That's head coach Craig Skinner and coach Rachel Lawson. Kentucky Volleyball and Kentucky Softball with us here tonight. And this has been BBN Live presented by eCoach. Tomorrow we'll be joined by baseball coach Nick Mingione and soccer coach Ian Carey. So be with us tomorrow at 2.30 and 8 o'clock right here on BBN Live. You can find us on Facebook at Kentucky Wildcats or the UK Athletics Twitter account at UK Athletics. This is BBN Live presented by eCoach.